going to tell you a story, and it's not going to be neat or easy to follow. It's going to take 10 parts, and you're going to need to pay attention. Did I say that right? Oh, and there may be a hint of a cycle. Welcome to the Aurora Wasteland Life Cycle. Episode 4, Monster in the Closet. I think I've stumbled across something. Something big. Something I need to tell the world about. I'm not sure how to do so because I don't know if I fully understand it. It's bigger than everything, so I'm going to need you to pay attention, read between the lines, and come up with your own conclusions because I'm not going to lay it out for you. I've discovered ten posts in the Aurora Wasteland that when laid together tell a story. A story that is going to change the world. So pay attention. Ugh. I think I said that already. But it's true. Pay attention. And think. Think outside the box. As well... You'll see. Maybe. Archived Aurora Wasteland post number four. Post discovered on the Aurora Wasteland website. Sometime a few years ago, Magnus's wife left him and his daughter. It's unknown where she went. Her disappearance doesn't seem to be linked to any Aurora Wasteland phenomena. Though, like everything, there is a likely connection. Magnus migrated to the western side of Canada with his daughter, looking for a new life, trying to get over their old life. Everything back home was difficult. It brought memories. Memories of his wife, their life together, and how she just vanished one day. As hard as it was for Magnus, he imagined it must have been infinitely harder for his daughter, Freya, who, while only ten, lives with foggy memories of her mother. Both of them needed a fresh start. So they moved. Magnus got a job working construction. He'd done it back home, and his skills carried over. Every morning, he'd wake up early and get ready before his daughter woke up. Then he'd get her ready for school, drop her off, and then get himself to work. Repeat, repeat, repeat but in a great way. Magnus loved his life with his daughter, and despite the occasional nightmare about her mother leaving her again, there was little to complain about. Well, that is until his daughter's nightmare took a step into the real world. One night, around two in the morning, Freya burst into Magnus's room. At top speed, she dove onto him. Startling Magnus awake, she mumbled something through her tears and sobs. The little Magnus could make out was monster. Over and over, she said the same word. It should be pointed out here that Magnus's daughter was 10 years old. She was about to explode into her pre-teens. Very little scared her anymore, which terrified Magnus. Whatever had caused his daughter to react like this must have been something truly terrifying. After consoling Hug, Magnus instructed his daughter to hide under the blankets and he'd go investigate. His daughter protested, but like any good father, he wanted to prove to her that their house was safe. Only it wasn't, as Magnus was about to find out. After turning the hall light on, Magnus approached his daughter's room, only to find there was a dull rumble coming from within it. Magnus laughed. Their house was less than a block from the train line, which caused the house to shake as trains passed by. He was certain the rumble was from her closet doors, protesting the passing train. Haphazardly, Magnus sauntered into Freya's room and pulled her closet doors open to relieve the rumble. What awaited him on the other side, well was something he'd never imagined he'd witness in his life. With the closet handle still in his hand, Magnus stared at the creature that looked to be born from his own nightmares, let alone his daughter's. The creature's hide was dark gray, stretched tightly over its slender body. It had four arms and four legs. It stood more than a foot taller than him. Its flat half-circle head stared at Magnus, confused, just as Magnus was. Its ribs heaved under its own massive breaths. Its teeth extended out of its mouth. Four massive, curled fangs quivered at Magnus. The common reaction in this situation would be to run. Only Magnus didn't. He did only what a few people would ever dare to do. It's said that the balls of Magnus grew to gravity-altering sizes that day. The moon tilted slightly closer to the earth on the day in question. Magnus reached back and drove his fist into the creature's face. Over and over again. Even as the creature folded to the ground, Magnus didn't stop. 
The thing had been in his daughter's room. It deserved every earth-shattering, ball-busting blow it took to the face. After a dozen punches, the creature stopped moving. The creature leaked a black, viscous fluid onto the carpet. Magnus staggered back and stared at it, adrenaline pumping, fist aching. Magnus witnessed what he'd just done. There had been an actual, real monster in his daughter's closet, and he'd just beaten the black, viscous, colored shit out of it. For the rest of the night, Freya slept in Magnus's room. She cuddled in next to him. It was nice, even if Magnus didn't sleep. Question after question kept him awake. What was that thing? How did it get into his daughter's room? Where was it from? How was he going to get that black stuff out of the carpet? By the time either of them made it into Freya's room in the morning, the creature was gone, completely turned to black fluid. Both Magnus and his daughter went about their day as normal, though a little tired. The more Magnus thought about what had happened, the more it seemed impossible. There weren't just monsters in kids' closets in real life. They certainly didn't dissolve after they died. With each passing second, he started to question if it had actually happened. Maybe the house had some sort of mold in it, a kind that caused hallucinations? Maybe both of them had been exposed to it. But the stain that remained on the floor of his daughter's room kept bringing Magnus back to just how real it was. That night, everyone slept in their own beds. The world was as it should be. No more monsters in the closet. Or so Magnus believed. At two in the morning, Freya burst into Magnus's room again. Again she dove on him, and again she told him there was a monster in her closet. Again Freya stayed in his room as Magnus went to investigate. He wasn't sure how to feel. He was certain she had just had a bad dream related to the night before. What were the chances of a second monster being in her closet? Turns out, quite high. Again Magnus pulled the closet doors open and the creature looked remarkably like the one he'd killed the night before and stared back at him. Only this time the monster struck first, punching Magnus right in the face. It should be noted here that punching Magnus in the face is a very bad idea. To be fair, the monster in his daughter's closet had no prior knowledge of this. But still, bad idea. Magnus' reply was swift and vicious. He unloaded a fury of fists to the creature, dropping it in seconds. Oh, sorry, it should be noted that Magnus was a boxer in his youth, so yeah, to reiterate, bad idea. This time, upon returning back to his bedroom with his daughter, Magnus called the police. A prudent course of action, though it didn't lead to the expected outcome. The police seemed unwilling or unable to help. They were only capable of deeming the house safe and threat neutralized. Though they did beg and remove the creature from Magnus. And while most of the officers seemed, despite evidence laying right in front of them, to not believe Magnus' story, a single officer who was the last to leave gave Magnus a business card. It had a link to a website and a description of when it should be used for the unknown. Magnus thanked the officer and immediately went to the website where he learned about a group of people who looked into the strange and weird paranormal, like the one him and his daughter were going through. He filled out the contact us section of the website and waited. By the time the sun was up the next morning, there was a knock on the front door. A thin woman with bleached hair, shaved on the sides, and heavy black eye makeup, stood with a smile plastered on her face and a laptop under her arm. She introduced herself as Alex and complimented Magnus on his beard. She said she loved his Viking style. Magnus replied by asking who she was, to which she simply replied, I'm from the Aurora Wasteland website, the one you contacted earlier this morning. We don't dick around, unless you're into that kind of stuff. She introduced herself as Alexia. Magnus took the following day off work. He walked Alexia around his home, showing her where the monster had been killed both times. The two meshed together well. Magnus wasn't used to talking with a beautiful woman since his wife had left them. But Alexia reminded him of her in all the best ways. By lunch, they were playfully teasing each other, and by early afternoon, they were playfully rolling around Magnus's bed together, naked. The more they kissed and touched, the more Magnus felt their connection grow. It felt like they were becoming one, and it wasn't until he looked away from her eyes that he saw they actually were connected. Everywhere she touched, his skin glowed with excitement. It felt like she was enhancing his pleasure through, well, he didn't know how. As she brought their bodies closer together, Everything in Magnus's body lit up, and he could feel his insides tingling. Then she collapsed on top of him, the glow of blue slowly fading away. Just as sleep was about to take him away for an afternoon nap, Magnus asked what had happened, what that was. Alexia replied, there are a lot of weird things out there, and she was one of them, but she wanted to help. So did anything else matter? 
After a quick nap, Alexia took off to pick up some gear, and Magnus went to pick up his daughter, who he dropped off at a friend's house for a sleepover. He was a little concerned that she'd have nightmares there as well, but he had his own sleepover planned with Alexia, who showed up later that night with all kinds of fun tech toys, as she called them. First up was a normal camera. She set it up so that the entire entrance to the closet could be captured with a wide-angle lens. Next was an infrared camera that she claimed could see into the closet, even with the doors closed. It would pick up the body heat from the creature inside. Third and final was a laser net that she fastened to each side of the closet door. She claimed that when she turned it on, it would slice apart anything that tried to leave the closet. Magnus would have no need to punch anything tonight, mostly because she had other plans for him. After Alexia worked her magic ways on him, there was something about her that Magnus just couldn't put his finger on, and he put his fingers in a lot of places that night. Again, Magnus felt the connection with her as their bodies connected. His skin again glowed at her touch, and their two bodies seemed to mesh together. After, as Magnus drifted to sleep with heavy eyes, he watched the screen for the infrared camera. There was something in the closet. It was growing. It looked more like a skeleton of a man underneath whatever was forming around it. The more he watched, the more it seemed like the monster he murdered the last two nights was nothing more than a layer on top of something else. What it was, he didn't know, and the sleep that was overtaking him forced him to relinquish his compiling questions. That night Magnus dreamed of replacing the carpet in his daughter's room and about the woman who had left him earlier in his life. At 2 a.m. he was woken up, but only partially. He was unable to move and speak. Sleep was forcing Magnus back into himself, but what he witnessed made him question whether he was already asleep or dreaming. Through sleep-heavy eyes, Magnus watched as Alexia turned off the cameras and packed all her stuff up, the last piece being the laser net, at which point she opened the closet doors, ran her fingers along the monster's cheek, then kissed it. She threw her bag over her shoulder and left. The monster eyed Magnus for a while, but never approached him. It seemed uncertain of what to do with Magnus and his fists, so he left Magnus be, and promptly smashed his way out of Magnus' daughter's window, leaving Magnus to fall back asleep. The next morning, Magnus woke with the sound of the outside world bleeding through the broken window. Glass covered the carpet. Magnus sighed as he looked around the room. He really was going to have to replace the carpet in here. As he made his way downstairs, there was a knock at the door. Magnus rushed to it, hoping it was Alexia hoping that she had a reason for what she did the night before. To his disappointment, it wasn't. A slender British woman introduced herself as Molly and said that she was from the Aurora Wasteland website. Magnus told her that a woman named Alexia had already been here from the website, to which Molly replied by saying she was the only Aurora Wasteland investigator in the area. Magnus has not since heard from Alexia. The monster no longer visits his daughter's room nightly, and Magnus gave in and replaced the carpet in his daughter's room. Did you see it? The start of the story. Remember everything, because you're going to need it. I can't lay it out for you, because I'm not sure I understand it. Still, the message, the idea is big, and well, you'll see. Hey, my name is Von Ashby. I wrote this. If you liked what you heard, head on over to vonashby.com slash free and pick up a free novel or a bunch of other free stuff. Go explore the Aurora Wasteland yourself at aurorawasteland.com. Don't forget to check out the Stories from the Wasteland podcast and search for Von Ashby on YouTube for video versions and other exciting videos. Thanks for listening.